What's up guys, Anthony Vapes. Today I'm not here with a review. Instead, I wanted to make a video about flavor. How to get the best flavor, flavor chasing, and basically for this part, it's going to be how to look at an atomizer and know if the flavor is going to be good or not. Because for the most part, I can pretty much tell like 95% of the time whether the flavor is going to be good or not. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about stuff like that in the intro. I want to go ahead and get in the up close and show you what I mean. I'm basically going to use, you know, evidence of efficiency and designs to show you where your flavor is going to be best. And the comparison I'm going to use is car engines. I'm going to use car engines to show you why, you know, different chamber sizes work better than others, different chamber shapes. And also I'm going to go over the airflow with top, side, and bottom on how to get the best flavor out of your stuff. Funny enough, I'm using the Crown, which I did a review on earlier this week, which is a really good flavor sub-ohm tank. But that's kind of irrelevant because I'm more talking about RDAs and RTAs, and basically rebuildables is what I'm talking about. Uh, before I actually get into that though, I just want to give you a little history on myself. Um, I am a huge flavor guy, absolutely huge flavor guy, and I'm gonna tell you why. I really didn't smoke cigarettes. Uh, you know, I've smoked a couple here and there, and let's face it, cigarette tastes nasty. If you're coming from smoking a cigarette, anything in vaping is going to be better flavor than that. I did smoke flavored cigars here and there, like Optimo's and Swishers and Black and Mild and stuff like that. And occasionally I'd have like a, you know, real cigar, an actual cigar scar. And a lot of times, like, I mean, if I'm golfing, I would just have a cigar. But if I was like playing poker, I would be drinking like Grand Marnier and I would dip the cigar in it because that was a classy thing to do when I was younger. <laughs> I don't know. But... <clears throat> I did smoke, that's, that's mostly what I did, and I smoked cloves sometimes too. But the main thing I did and the reason I got into vaping was not because I was addicted to smoking, but I was addicted to chewing tobacco. I was going through a can of dip a day, easily a can of dip a day. I always had one in my mouth, and what I did was basically just the skull pouches. It was mostly the apple, then they stopped making the apple, and then I kind of rotated between like citrus and wintergreen and mint. Uh, their berry one was nasty, so I never did that. So I would basically go to the, the liquor store and they would sell me, and they were normally like seven bucks a can. So they would sell me a pack of five cans for 25 bucks. I don't know what the price is now, but that's what it was, you know, over five, six years ago when I, when I was doing that. So, and I would go and I would buy, you know, a five pack of, of the apple, five pack of the citrus, five pack of wintergreen, whatever. I would buy like three different flavors of it and have 15 cans. And I would go through those cans in like two weeks. So I was spending, you know, about 150 bucks a month on chewing tobacco. Now, I always had a pouch in my mouth, always. So unless I was physically eating, I would have a pouch in my mouth. Morning coffee, I'd have a pouch. I'd always have a spit cup with me. You know, when I'm home, I had spit cups around. I would sit there and spit in them all the time. But as soon as the flavor started to get weak, I would take it out and throw in another one. Even if it still had flavor, as soon as it started to get weak. So for me, I was always used to having flavor in my mouth. Always. Like, I always had a blast of flavor in my mouth. For people who didn't do chewing tobacco, because most people that from vaping are probably quitting smoking, the best, like, um, comparison I can give you is... Imagine like chewing gum or mints in your mouth and always having gum in your mouth. And as soon as like your gum starts to run out of flavor, you throw it out and you throw another piece of gum. You get so used to having that flavor all the time that if you were to, you know, chew an unflavored gum or something, it just, it's not the same to you. Like I needed that large amount of flavor. So when I originally got off of chewing tobacco, when I started at least, I started with a basic pen like everyone else probably, especially back then. I had a little Ego C Twist battery in a Kango Eva tank. And it was a little, you know, mouth to lung vape pen. You can still buy them now probably for like five bucks. I paid way more than that, unfortunately, <laughs> back then. So that's what I started with. And I did not stick to that very long. It just was not good enough. And I wound up moving into actually getting like a bigger two mod. I think it was like the Joytech um, Evic. It was like the first, first, first two mod. It was like 11 watts. And it was like the first one. And I got it when it first came out. And I got a Kangaroo Pro Tank to go with it. And again, it was just still not enough for me. And I was pretty close to going back to chewing tobacco because I couldn't get the flavor that I, that I wanted to, to stay off of it. You know, I was even doing them both at the same time a little bit. So what really hit me then is when I started to get into building because I shifted away from that very fast and I got into building. And I was pretty much nothing but mechs and RDAs for a long, long time. Probably up until about a year and a half ago. I was pretty much mechs and RDAs only. That's all I used was mechs and RDAs. Did my own coil builds and everything, just single tube mechs and RDAs. Then, 
thankfully, because the way the market, you know, exploded, is there's a lot more options. Now I have like dual battery mechs, I have series, I have parallels, and I have a bunch of regulated devices, which I actually prefer regulated devices now, because they could put out the wattage I needed. You know, back when like the DNA 60 came out, people were like, oh my god, 60 watts, that's so much. I was getting more than that already from my tube, from my little, you know, tube that I was using for years, you know, a little mech tube. So, you know, the way I look at it, it's like, it just, it, you know, it wasn't enough power. It wasn't enough power for me. I, I, I vape at over 70 watts, you know, all the time, even back then. So that's the way that I look at flavor is I need a lot of flavor. Not everyone does. You know, some people are happy with just a little bit of flavor because it's a lot better than smoking a cigarette. Cigarettes just taste nasty. And that's all there is to it. So anything's a step up. In life, everything is relative. Everything's relative. You know, if you're used to eating steak all the time and then someone wants to give you a cheeseburger, you're like, oh, the cheeseburger. Like, I want my steak. But if you're starving and you haven't had food, you know, ramen noodles taste like the best thing ever. So that's the way that I look at it is everything's relative. So if you go from a cigarette to a decent mouth to lung setup, you're going to be like, damn, that's a lot of flavor. It tastes good. It's way better than my cigarette. For me, it's a huge step down because I need to be like blasted with flavor in order to really enjoy my vape out of it. So that's kind of my history of vaping and why I'm so much into flavor. So let's go ahead and shoot into the up close. I'm going to do some drawings and stuff for you guys. And then I'll be back here with some final thoughts. All right, so here's up close basically drawings and stuff. I'm going to go over some stuff when it comes to flavor. So I've done a couple dry runs of this, but mind you, I am doing it live. It's not like I have a script or anything, but I kind of have a picture of my like um, trial run, so to speak, about how it works. And my drawing is terrible, so you have to forgive that. My drawing is absolutely terrible. And on top of that, it's really difficult to do with the camera in front of it. <clears throat> so when it comes to flavor, there's going to be three main points that decide your flavor. And that's going to be your airflow, it's going to be your chamber size, and it's going to be your um, coil size. All three of those mixed together is what's going to give you the best flavor possible out of each atomizer. Now there's different, um, different types of chambers and stuff, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson. And yeah, I know you're staring at a blank page, but whatever. <clears throat> so here's the history lesson of it. Um, original engines had a design with the combustion chamber like this. So we're talking about actual car engines here. So the original design of the combustion chamber was like this. Now this turned out not to be a very efficient design. <clears throat> so Dodge came out with what's the legendary Hemi engine. Everyone's probably heard of the Hemi engine. Don't know how many people know how what it means. I'm sure a lot of people on here are pretty familiar with cars or whatnot. But they came out with the Hemi engine. What they did was they changed the design of the chamber to have a hemispherical shape. shape. Hence, Hemi. So what they did was because when the piston was coming up, the issue was a lot of crap was getting caught in these corners. And it was not being very efficient and hence didn't deliver as much horsepower. So Dodge, simply by changing the design of the chamber to a hemispherical shape and getting rid of this area here, made a more powerful engine out of the same size engine. And that's why the Hemi engine became popular. Now the Hemi is a little bit outdated. They use what's kind of called a Penti Hemi, I believe is a technical term for it, where it's almost like a Hemi, but it's more angled up. So it's like the Hemi, except they actually cut off even more and just flat out angled it like this. And that's the modern design of the combustion chamber for engines now, is this Penti Hemi's design chamber. That's where you get the most horsepower out of your engine. So the reason that I'm showing you this, explaining this, because that's basically scientific fact there, that you get more horsepower out of an engine with a combustion chamber like that than you would out of that with everything else being similar or being the same. That is a scientific fact, and that's why the Hemi engine was so popular, and why we moved on to now the Penti Hemi. So the reason I'm showing you this is because it's all about efficiency. It works the same exact way, same exact way, when it comes to our atomizers. The atomizers have a chamber shape. So if you have a flat chamber, like the other one, so you have your flat chamber, and regardless of how your air is, but let's say, here's your build deck. So you have your build deck with a couple screws in it. You got your coils coming out here. Coil. And let's just say you have bottom air, because who really cares? So you have bottom air. So here's your air, right? So the air is coming in from the side here. 
hitting the coils, it's going up your chamber, right? So here's your tip, just a tip. So there's your air and it's coming up the chamber. The thing is you're still gonna have crap bouncing around over here. You still are. So by designing the chamber like this, now everything's being forced directly into your mouth, increasing your flavor. You're cutting out this inefficiency here by doing that. So when you have a flat shape like that, that's basically the situation that it comes in. So based on pure fact of efficiency, the best design and best shape, best flavor you're gonna get are chambers that are shaped like this. And for vaping, most people just call them conical. It's a conical shape. Okay, so now we got that covered. So now we know this is the best way to get flavor. Just like it's the best way to get horsepower out of your car. It's the most efficient design. It's what stops wasted, basically, space. All right, so here's our tip. Now let's talk about air flows. Let's go over the engine. The OBS engine, funny enough, since I'm using engines to prove this, is an atomizer that I made a video about last week that gives bad flavor. And now I'm gonna actually explain why. Here's your coils. And mind you, can you build them higher? Yeah, you can build them higher to try to make it better. And mind you, the engine actually has this chamber. It has the flat chamber, it doesn't have a conical chamber. On top of that, here's your air coming in. So we have air and air. And then the intake is here. So basically, when you're sucking your air, air is gonna come here, it's gonna come down here, it's gonna be sucked right back up the top. So that's how your airflow is going in the engine. Now you have your coils, they're kicking out vapor. But this is just picking vapor off the top. You're losing so much, so much flavor here. You're not getting anything over the coils to cool them off. And that is why it is a scientifically fact that it is a poor design to get efficient flavor. Because you're losing out on that. Now if we were going to take something like the XORTA, which is one of my favorites. So you have the XORTA, which has a nice conical shape. It actually has a pretty small chamber too. So I'm actually gonna cut some of this off. We'll say that's your bottom airflow. Here's your deck. And mind you, this is a side velocity deck is the way I'm doing it. So that's the side view. Here's the coils coming out of it. Here's that, and here's your air. So the air is gonna come straight here, right over the coil, right here, and anything escaping is gonna be funneled here directly into your mouth. So it's an extremely efficient design. You get your coils cooled off. The air is coming right over your coils, grabbing the vapor right as it comes off, and everything's being bounced and funneled directly up for you. There's nothing just floating around here hoping to get pulled off straight up for you. Now we also have the side air flows. So let's say you have the side air flow, much like the Supreme or the Boreas. And they also do have a conical chamber as well, believe it or not. My drawings are getting worse, right? So here's your side airflow now. The process of the side airflow, and my drawings are terrible, so none of this is to scale, is when you build your coils, right? You wanna build your coils, basically where you can just see the bottom of it from your airflows. So the air is gonna come in and still, right there, be bouncing. So as long as you build your coils up above the airflow, you're gonna get that same bottom airflow flavor pretty much. You just are. Now mind you, if you built them low, like down here, now you're gonna lose a lot of flavor. So literally this small amount of distance from where you build your coil is gonna make a huge difference in the flavor. Absolutely huge difference in the flavor. So that's basically how it works. So I'm gonna show a quick breakdown here one more time. And we're just gonna say even with an ideal chamber on why the top airflow is just no good. So here's your ideal chamber, right? Again, here's your deck, here's your coils. So we have bottom, we have side, and we have top. Now I'm gonna even throw the top here on an angle because there's people that say, well, there's the angled airflow where it directs, no, angled airflow does not direct anything onto your coil, period. It does not because we're not blowing. If we were blowing air into here, where air was actually being blown, then yes, it would deflect down. If you put your out here, if you were basically sucking from down here, then yeah, you would pull it across the coils eventually. But we're not, we're sucking from up here. So this top airflow, even if it's angled, it's still gonna go like this. 
it's still gonna do that. That's how airflow works. Now with side airflow, you'd be like this, and bottom airflow is like this. I think it's pretty obvious which one's gonna give you the best flavor. This isn't anywhere near your coils. You have all this wasted area in here not doing anything for you. This is just picking off the top of the coils, and this is where you're actually getting your flavor going straight over the coils. So that's why your airflow and your chamber size, two of the biggest things that come to actually making good flavor. So you want the conical chamber, and you don't want it too big, you want it to match the coils, which will be the next part I'm gonna go over, and you want that bottom airflow, or even a side airflow, as long as you can adjust your coils up high enough, you're still gonna get good flavor. But a pure top airflow, like the engine, no matter how it's angled, even with the Faro, with the angles on it, if you use the top airflow, it mutes your flavor. Flat out, and I've done the, you know, where I've used it on all three. I've done both open, one open, the other one open, and the flavor is always gonna be best from the bottom. The top airflow is just the flavor muter. All right, so the next thing is gonna be chamber size and your build. That's the third part. So we went over air, we went over chamber shape, now we got chamber size. Depending on your chamber size, you wanna build your coils correctly to match that chamber size. See, this is a nice size chamber. So if we come in here, and let's say I make these little tiny coils, they're not gonna really produce enough vapor to actually give me good flavor. It's just not gonna produce enough with all this extra space and all the air coming in. If you were to make giant coils, you're basically blocking off your air. And now it's not gonna get enough air to cool them off, and you're gonna get a harsh flavor. What you want is the medium coils. You want coils that give you enough room to where air can get through, and you can get cooled off, and you're not blocking anything, but you don't want the coils too small. So the three main things when it comes to the flavor is again, it's gonna be your airflow, it's gonna be your vapor production from your coils, and it's gonna be your chamber shape and size. So it's all gotta be a mixture of all those things into one to give you the perfect flavor. So this is exactly why top airflows to me. All right, so I wanna thank you guys for suffering through that because my drawings are ugly and terrible. Let's face it, they are. But it's a lot of information. So basically, the whole point of what I'm doing here is to let you know about picking good flavor atomizers. Um, it's funny because I, I kind of have a thing where I can look at an atomizer 9.5 out of 10 times and I can tell you how good the flavor is going to be. You know, every once in a while something might surprise me or I might have made a mistake and been wrong, but for the most part, I can pretty much look at something and be like, yeah, that's going to be really good flavor or no, that's not going to be good flavor. Way more often than not. I'm talking easily 95% of the time. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen there's this movie called uh, Race. Really good movie, by the way. It's about these two race car drivers back, I don't know, in the 60s or something like that. I think it was like John Hunt and Nicky Lauda. And... It's a really good movie. It's actually definitely worth watching. So I'd check that out if, you, you know, if I were you guys, you could probably watch it on Netflix or something. But there's a scene where Nikki Lauda is basically, I guess, trying to impress this girl is the way I'd put it. And he's driving her car like it's a race car because, you know, he's a professional race car driver. And basically afterwards, you know, he tells her like, you know, this needs to be fixed. That's wrong. That's wrong in your car. And she's like, well, that can't be. I just had it serviced. And he's like, I might not be the best looking person. I might not be this. I might not be that. He's like, but I was blessed with an ass that can feel every little thing in the car. So for him, like he would take cars around laps. And mind you, it could be exaggerated for the movie. I don't know how true it is. But he could take cars around laps and stuff like that and you know be able to come back and tell them everything that's wrong with the car because he can feel it when he's driving it not to you know kind of brag about myself or anything but that's kind of how i am in vaping most of the times when i you know use a mod i can tell if it's hitting harder or weak before i even do my testing and more you know i'm pretty much right every time whether it's weak or hard or pretty accurate you know i can tell the difference i can tell when a mod's not performing good you know even with the predator you know, I could tell within two days of having it how much my performance degraded from when I first got it, which had to do with the 510 bin basically making a crappier connection because of the way it was press fit and they were popping out. It just wasn't solid in there. And I can do the same with atomizers. I can look at it and see if the flavor is going to be good or not. I can look at a build and see if there's issues. I spend a lot of time, you know, on forums and stuff helping people out. And a lot of times I'll ask for pictures on stuff. And I can tell them, like, this needs to be fixed, that needs to be fixed, that could be fixed. So I basically... 
I have so much time and experience of doing it that I can pretty much figure out what issues are. I can figure out, you know, what they're doing wrong, why they're not getting good flavor. Sometimes it's something simple, sometimes it's not. So that's why I wanted to make this video so that I can share this knowledge and, you know, kind of expand it out to more people so other people can understand when they're shopping and looking for stuff instead of waiting for reviews or things like that on where they're going to find the best flavor. So that's why I want to make this video and hopefully you guys got a lot of good information about it. If there's something you feel I didn't cover or something I missed, please feel free to comment down below. You know, I did my best to go over as much as I could without making the video way too long. Hopefully I keep it under 20 minutes, we'll see. Um, other than that, this is something I probably want to do every Friday. So in my plan, I'm probably going to do reviews, you know, during the week. Well, you know, I don't know how many right now. I'm so far behind. I'm basically doing one a day. But Fridays, I want to do like general vaping videos. So if you guys have ideas for videos, please let me know down below. I already have like five or six of them that I want to make. So, you know, feel free to comment down below if there's anything else in vaping you want me to cover. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do next week. I'm thinking about doing maybe one on uh, premium e-juice or something like that. So I haven't really decided. I have a list. I haven't picked it out. But nonetheless, I definitely want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed all my reviews for the week. Um, on Monday, July 3rd, I'm going to be putting out my review for the mod I was using in this video and that I've used all week, the Minikin 2. So I have that review coming. And on Tuesday, I'm going to be reviewing the Joy Tech Cuboy Tap Kit. And I'm not sure what my reviews are going to be for Wednesday or Thursday yet. So definitely check them out. I also do written ones on Reddit and stuff. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. As always, you know, feel free to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Like, subscribe, all that other good stuff. Uh, the same stuff I say in every video. And since I record five, you know, five at one time, I've literally said this spiel, you know, four other times tonight. So bear with me as I'm running through it. You guys know what to do. Help me out, subscribe, like, and all that good stuff. Um, this is Anthony Vapes. As always, keeping it honest. Hopefully you guys can say you're doing the same and I'll catch you on my next review.